Excellencies, distinguished members of the panel, speakers, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, we are going through a period where our topic today is hugely important. And I want to thank again the members of our panel, the minister, for taking the time to be here with us today to tackle the energy topic. The minister, minister witnessed, he came with a positive and good energy in this conference. So I believe the debates will be very interesting. In this new edition, of the summit organized by the new strategy center as a main organizer in partnership with the University of Agronomic Sciences and Veterinary Medicine. This is already a tradition, but uh, at national level, there are two very important conferences organized with the academia in partnership because universities are um, debate uh, platforms where ideas and proposals are debated in partnership with uh, the academia, with the stakeholders, and often this generates solutions for the society. This is why in Timisoara, West University of Timisoara, we have uh, the security challenges in the Balkans conference, which is very topical given uh, the circumstances we are living and the recent dynamics. And we have this uh, conference in Bucharest, which focuses on the Black Sea challenges. Allow me to introduce the members of our panel today. We have with us His Excellency Mr. Virgil Popescu, Minister of Energy, Mr. Komismin Gitsa, General Manager Nuclear Electric Romania, Mr. Alexander Maximescu, Vice President OMV Petnum, Mr. Marius Jude. CEO of Rom Gaz Romania and Mr. Eric Stab, Chairman and CEO Angie Romania. Obviously, the Black Sea has a hugely important role in terms of energy challenges, so we are going to deba debate the challenges and the, the cooperation opportunities in this field because the issue of energy is not only a national uh, issue, it uh, is important for the entire Europe, for the entire world. And uh, this is a flamboyant uh, field. Uh, it's a hot potato. Allow me to invite the minister to present his viewpoint in about eight, ten minutes, his viewpoint on all these challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Rector. Yes, the Black Sea is a point of reference in ensuring the energy security for Romania, and it has become a hot spot nowadays, which proves that energy security is a component of the national security. I believe everyone present here can argue that we have uh, the same uh, goal to increase investments in energy, both uh, energy and gas in, at the Black Sea region. And if I start from my right to left, as we see it, we have Mr. Theodor Kiriko, Kiriko the head of... Uh, the board with nuclear electrica. Nuclear electrica already has two reactors in Chernavod next to the Black Sea. As you know, the nuclear civil program of Romania in partnership with our partners, USA, Canada, and France, involves the development of two new uh, reactors, three and four, with Chernavod. And very important, the module, modular uh, reactor placed in Deutsche. We are talking 
about the safest and most advanced uh, technology in modular reactors. The only one which was approved by a national regulator, the American NRC regulator. Moving on, we speak of Mr. Maximescu, and I uh, link him with Mr. Popescu, OMV, Pet Petrom, and Romgas. These are consortia that will coordinate the gas extraction from the Black Sea. Romgas has finalized uh, the procedure for gas procurement. The perimeter owned by Exxon at the Black Sea, and right now we are speaking of a new consortium between Romgas and OMV Petrom for gas extraction from the Black Sea, and I expect this investment to start as soon as possible and to see a statement by the two companies. By the end of this year, we have a forum on in September here in Bucharest where we invited uh, my colleagues, ministers from the countries uh, in the region, Bulgaria, Greece, Serbia, Moldova, Ukraine, and we are going to discuss in this forum the importance of this region. We also invited Mrs. Kadri Sims, uh, the Commissioner for Energy, Mrs. Valan, the Commissioner for Transport. So this will be a very important event in the second half of September in Bucharest on oil and gas topics. And last but, no, last but not least, we have, uh, I have next to me Mr. Eric Stab. Maybe you are wondering about uh, what is his connection to the Black Sea. As far as I know, the company he is leading, uh, the first perimeter, new perimeter which started extracting gas from the Black Sea. This is there, it's them. So basically, Romania has already started extracting. Uh, gas from the Black Sea. I'm sure others will follow pretty soon. Others, I mean, Romgas and OMV Petrom. And Romania, from this viewpoint, in 2026, early 2027, will become independent in terms of natural gas supply, leading, obviously, to energy independence. The entire... Um, Energy strategy in Romania relies on gas extraction from the Black Sea and the placement of new energy production uh, sources is designed so that it should end by the end of 2026, uh, the year or early 2027, when uh, we expect we should start extraction, gas extraction from the Black Sea so that we can consume as much as possible internal energy resources and no longer be dependent on gas imports from the Russian Federation or any other sources, why not? So the Black Sea gas is an important security pillar, the nuclear energy, which is also placed in the Black Sea area, is another important security pillar. And the third pillar is representative by massive investments in renewables and the Black Sea is very generous here. At least uh, 20 gigawatts uh, wind energy we can access. Uh, this month we are going to publish the draft law on offshore wind so that we have the legal framework for wind energy. We are very determined to advance with uh, renewable programs. Actually, this year, Oltenia Energy uh, Complex received uh, funding for the 670 uh, megawatts for uh, voltaic energy, and under NRRP, the 500 million uh, financial envelope have been overwritten. We are talking about uh, projects made in amount of more 100 million and. Uh, 
we are talking about one gigawatt renewable energy to be financed at the end of this year. The modernization fund will include new calls for project proposals for renewables. We are clearly intending to help companies. We will have a corner for the food industry to reduce their costs. And obviously, we are thinking about other industries as well. And we are also thinking of, of large renewables producers. So pillar one, and nuclear energy. Pillar two, to get some structure. So on the first pillar, then we have renewables, and obviously we need gas as a transition fuel, which is our resource, and that will be our third security pillar. This, these were briefly just some of the concerns for our ministry. This year has been and will be an investment year. Uh, 2023 will be the same, 2024 the same, because we want to see more energy production capacities activated in the next years. Nothing has been done in the past years, and we should admit that in 2012 or 2013, when we could no longer access uh, the old renewables scheme, I haven't seen a new capacities uh, this year, hopefully this month, uh, we hope to unblock the year not investment. And here maybe uh, the Rongas representative um, can say more. Probably you are wondering what happened there. It was a contract signed, uh, a turnkey contract signed in 2016, a fixed amount. And uh, the former management, uh, Rongas management, did not uh, supervise this contract. So the results were not good. So I'm optimistic here, the Spanish government together with the Romanian government is determined to solve this issue. I uh, mentioned the Ernut because it is one of uh, the investments which had started and should have been finalized long time ago. We also have a new investment, investment with the majority of a private investors. Rompetrol at media, 80 megawatt uh, production based on natural gas, it will be finalized in 2023. So, briefly, these are some of our concerns. Uh, nuclear energy, renewables, uh, short-term production, uh, Oltenia, this year increased production up to almost 1 million so we are uh, relying on our uh, resources to be able to overcome the issues uh, in, of uh, winter. And uh, as much as we, if, if necessary, we will not hesitate to use uh, coal to produce energy. Uh, we assumed 2022 as a phase out deadline for coal, but to uh, we tend to maintain it uh, if and as much as necessary. So briefly, these were the main objectives. That would be a roadmap initiated by the government, and we are trying to continue it. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Surely this presentation of the future uh, developments with uh, the ministry's uh, project in, projects in terms of investments and this uh, holistic uh, viewpoint on uh, redesigning the energy system in Romania and moving towards renewables and green energy. Obviously, this cannot be achieved without the actors 
in the market, and some of them are here with us. I now pass the floor to Mr. Gitz, who is the general manager with Nuclear Electrica, to share his viewpoint. Hello. Uh, Mr. Gitz, unfortunately, is not here. I apologize. No problem. It's just a side matter. It's between us. Of course, it is an honor for me to present uh, our uh, efforts to increase uh, capacity and uh, uh, clean energy production. Some technical assistance. Okay. Ah, Regarding both energy security and the environmental target, the role of energy is very important next to other uh, clean energy sources. Uh, given the con current context, I don't know whether things will remain the same, but uh, the point is that uh, by 2032, about um, the coal production uh, units should uh, be reduced and completed with two new nuclear groups. Uh, Retechnologization will help maintaining the current percentage of nuclear energy, and there will be also renewables and hydrogen to contribute, of course, uh, in terms of energy security. In principle, uh, Romania is doing well, but uh, an increase here depends on an increase of consumption, and then obviously Based on our information, we were uh, thinking uh, of an improvement about 2 or 3 percent. So, Nuclear Electrica has a contribution of about 18 to 20 percent in Romania's energy production and about 33 percent of the clean energy. Annual contribution to units to the reduction of equivalent carbon dioxide. We provide jobs and we have projects in amount of of about 8-9 billion euros by 2030-2032. Our important projects are the refurbishment of Unit 1, two new can-do units, and the development of small modular reactors. As the minister mentioned earlier, these two projects will be implemented under a North Atlantic umbrella. Of course, uh, sometimes there are voices accusing us of partnership. Well, in geography, I learned that uh, the Atlantic has two shores. Other important projects? We also have the project, uh, the extraction and tritium extraction and storage station, and the improvement an integrated uh, cycle for integrated nuclear fuel cycle. We have already started development. We uh, took over one of the factories uh, from the National Uranium Company 
company and uh, this way we strengthened very much uh, uh, uranium supply security because we have access to several markets from where we can buy raw material. Further, we have a uranium deposit, a concession, probably this activity will be extended and we will even be able to have an integrated nuclear cycle. Regarding Unit 1, we uh, Shareholders decided to invest in this project. And currently, the consultant, a Canadian consultant, was selected, Can Do Energy, uh, which uh, took over uh, former uh, energy uh, authority. Uh, right now, they are preparing the necessary documents to identify. Uh, uh, long uh, fabrication cycle equipment, uh, the specifications, the terms of reference, and so on. Third phase will be the actual uh, implementation of WARPS. By the end of 2026, the unit will be closed, and it will take about two years, uh, two years and a half, uh, when the unit will uh, become in, uh, active again in the new system. Unit three and four, the activities are managed managed by a brand, Energonuclear. They signed a contract with Kandu Technology, and right now they are developing the necessary supporting documents to be granted uh, the building permit and uh, an opinion from the European Commission based on the Euratom Treaty. They are also developing activity packages to move to the next stage. Right now, we have a preliminary financing decision. There are other steps to be taken and until the final decision. Regarding the tritium, this is a very interesting project. Some of the technology, the final part of the tritium extraction process is uh, Romanian, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it is a Canadian technology which we adopted. What happens here when you start uh, different uh, works like refurbishment or closing down, there are negative effects on the staff. There is additional exposure, and this tritium removal reduces a lot the exposure and the cost. Another advantage, tritium is important, an important element for the future stage of uh, nuclear energy. Uh, I'm talking here about nuclear fusion, and uh, I link this with the interplanet. Regarding small and modular, rea modular reactors, Nuclear Electrica concluded a memorandum with New scale. This company, why did we choose New Scale? This is the most advanced company in terms of project uh, authorization. Uh, the pro the, it was uh, authorized by a national regulator, the Nuclear Committee in the United States. Obviously, there have been other steps. A grant from a USA grant uh, funded a study to select the location. Uh, the study analyzed the several candidate locations and identified one location which meets the general requirements, included both in the Romanian and in the international standards. Next, there will be uh, another grant which has been announced by President Biden 
Biden to develop engineering activities and in-depth field research so as to draft the location authorization report to obtain the final location authorization. The gentleman uh, recently changed glasses and uh, is still striving. There are many companies interested in the project. Uh, and the countries, uh, Bulgaria, Poland, the Czech Republic, Romania, Ukraine, the investors have uh, diversified a lot in this new scale project and uh, already signed contracts with the Sun, Samsung, and they already started building components. In Romania, we expect a new scale developed to different project scenarios with four modules, six modules, 12 modules. We chose the six module option. The power of one module is 77 megawatts. So six modules will probably present about uh, 460 megawatts. The implementation, about 200 operational jobs, about 1,500 jobs during construction, 2,300 jobs in manufacturing, and CO2 emission reductions, about 4,000 tonnes. Romania has uh, potential in this project. It's a regional project as well, and we strongly believe that uh, the nuclear industry in Romania, the remaining industry, will play an important role in this project, obviously in cooperation with our foreign partners. The last slide, something that uh, deserves our attention, the project includes uh, support provided by a new scale and by the American government, namely the development of a training center for specialists, which will be located in Politechnica University in Bucharest, and that will be provided, uh, well, that will provide uh, basic training. Again, this is not a full scope simulator for the user. It is an educational simulator. Thank you very much, and I'm waiting for your questions. Thank you as well, Your Excellency, Theodor Kirika, Chair of the Board of Directors of Nuclear Electrica. Very interesting information that you have uh, delivered. You saw all the interesting projects presented uh, by Mr. Kirika in cooperation uh, with uh, other partners of Nuclear Electrica that will, of course, bring the society and all of us great benefits. I will now give the floor to Mr. Eric Staub, Chairman and CEO of NG Romania. Thank you, Provost Minister, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Be first and foremost, I would like to share the pleasure of being here, and I'm also happy that NG Romania is for the fourth consecutive year partner of the new strategy center. The energy security has become the number one priority on the world political agenda, and it will be a major economic challenge for the next decade. Yeah. 
In the EU, the climate change and the, uh, the objective to be independent from uh, energy from Russia demand that uh, we cut back on uh, conventional energy sources and to develop alternatives based on renewable energy sources. Repower EU, the EC's answer to be independent from fossil fuel in Russia by 2027, please, for a rapid and quick energy transition. At the same time, the challenges to bring gas and oil from uh, renewables is quite high and depends on improving import infrastructure and distribution infrastructure as well. We need to also improve the gas transport infrastructure between member states and of gas storage capacities. Therefore, we are now under the umbrella of a double demand. We have to, it is imperative to reduce energy costs as much as possible and to expedite the energy tra transition and to handle the issue of infrastructure so as member states improve uh, or actually to substitute uh, gas import from the Russian Federation. This is an equation that cannot be solved easily without compromise, and it can only be reached through an effort of solidarity from the member states and players along the entire energy value chain having as priority the end consumer. Moreover, we have to notice that Increasing the national energy profile sets different ways of reaching these objectives. From the beginning, I would like to mention that NG is not part of any uh, industrial project in Russia and does not uh, invest uh, in this country in the ever-growing ever intense context. NG will make all efforts to deliver gas to its customers. Long-term supply contracts with Gazprom have been since 2021. Almost 20% 20 of the group's gas sale and the consumption covered by it worldwide. But NG Group has a supply portfolio consisting of long-term contracts with Norway, the Netherlands, Nigeria, and the US, a portfolio that also includes um, uh, supply with liquefied natural gas. Therefore, we will take all necessary measures to secure um, supply of natural gas. Now more than ever, NG wants to and rallies up to progress to an energy mix that is less dependent on natural gas, focusing on developing energy production from renewables and green gas such as uh, hydrogen and methane. This strategy of our group is also valid for Romania. Romania is a member state with a special situation as far as energy goes. It has a broad range of advantages in the Black Sea region and Southeast Europe, be it its nuclear legacy or hydropower plants or offshore natural gas reserves that are starting to be capitalized on. Through the uh, agreement in 2018 that the minister referred to as well, NG has proved its commitment to bring to the Romanian market um, gas from the Black Sea and implicitly Romania's energy security. In July, daily flows from this gas uh, reached in Romania. I would also like to mention that NG Romania, through its Turgumoresh branch, where our colleagues in Romgas are included with a capacity of uh, 300 million cubic meters, contributes to the objective of the Romanian state and of the EU to store 
energy to for the winter. So it's 80% uh, storage percentage. We shouldn't forget the potential of renewables. The minister also mentioned it. Romania could export 144 terawatts hour per year of renewable energy. The Black Sea gives a great offshore potential, energy potential, comparable to the North Sea. And he provides its expertise in the known worldwide in our EDP and Renewables Partnership. And the NG Group is involved in developing offshore wind farms in the US, South Korea, France, Belgium, Portugal, and so on. At the time when less tensions, uh, or when uh, the situation in the Black Sea is under less tension, the offshore energy capacity will also be installed uh, in the Romanian waters region. I don't want to oversee the uh, fact that these renewable solutions can give various industries the possibility to depend less on the market as far as their energy consumption goes and of the very high prices that we are facing so far. Uh, this year, NG Romania signed a partnership with Saint-Gobain to build the largest on-site photovoltaic uh, uh, system delivering 20% of the energy in Calarash, generating over, uh, avoiding generating over 24,000 tons per year. Although hydrogen is the star of the energy transition, Romania also has a great potential. The Romania's capacity to be a major player in producing biomethane. We are here at the University of Agronomic Sciences, uh, and the potential is quite impressive with respect to methane on valuing on using uh, uh, organic waste so as to focus on a circular economy, including from fertilizers. That can be possible. The Fit for 55 sets a target of 35 billion cubic meters of biomethane per year. The question is how much of this quantity will be generated in Romania. Romania has one of the highest potentials in Europe that, if capitalized on, can generate, according to a survey of consortium European Gas Compliant, up to 8 billion cubic meters per year. Yeah, of biomethane. It's the maximum technical potential, which ranks Romania sixth in the EU. Thus, Romania has all necessary uh, remedies to be an energy supplier in the region. Now, capitalizing on this potential can open the area for new investments and strategic opportunities for Romania. Nevertheless, Romania is still a net importer of electricity and depends on the imports of natural gas during winter to manage to reach our objectives, to reconvert the or re engineer the energy industry, we have to focus and adapt the upstream investments with the needs in the downstream and, of course, at affordable prices. We need reliable distribution networks that help us bring this energy to our clients. And Romania understands its leader role in this case to continue the development and modernization of the distribution network of natural gas so as to make it efficient, energy efficient, digitalized and capable to deliver to our clients renewable gas. However, we have to understand that our industry needs a continuous 
flow of investments throughout its value chain, reducing or even the risk of blockage on investments bears a risk of slowing down the energy transition and may delay reprofiling Romania as a leader in the energy sector. I would like, therefore, to stress the great issues, bottlenecks that we face in managing the economic impact that it has on the company, uh, those cap measures, capping measures, but also the pre-funded support scheme almost fully from its own pocket. A delayed payment of the amounts owed by the state according to the current legislation continues to put great pressure on the cash flow. The reliability, the economic reliability of the supply and distribution activities uh, is uh, a prerequisite in ensuring the investment flow in a period when this is more important than ever. We understand the measures taken by the Romanian state to protect the consumers, but you also need a lot of stimuli to into smart grids and green uh, systems of transport and distribution. We have to align our strategies to, and we aim to align our strategies to the Romanian state and the other players on the market, and to continue to support the energy security and reaching the objectives of um, energy transition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stab. Indeed, NG Romania is an extremely important partner, player in the life and market in Romania. Exceptional projects, a network, as you saw, um, and a desire to expand that are absolutely impressive and that give us hope that in a uh, hope into a collaboration with uh, uh, other partners so as to find a way to reach energy independence toward green energy. Thank you again very much. Allow me now to give the floor to an old partner and collaborator of this conference that uh, every time comes uh, gl gladly to Timisoara or to Bucharest, to the uh, conferences organized by New Strategy Center in this area of Black Sea and Balkans. I now give the floor to Mr. Alexandru Maximescu, Vice Chair of the Petrom. However, Petrom. Thank you, Provost. Uh, uh, I would like to stand by Eric's congratulations in saying that you've managed to create in the past years, uh, through these events, a true forum of debate, of sharing ideas uh, among important players, public authorities, the industry, the academia. We now feel more than ever the need of a debate, seeing the challenges that lie ahead, especially uh, in the energy industry. Investments of billions will follow in the next years, and for this, for this to be successful, we need dialogue, we need to, to, to debate with all relevant players. Coming back now to the importance and potential of the Black Sea, I think uh, we've seen this year how important the Black Sea is as far as security goes, as far as energy goes. We believe in the uh, 
black sees potential a minister if i can adjust that uh, onv petrom is uh, present for more than 30 years in the black sea uh, generating natural gas and crude oil uh, we have uh, a broad experience with the black sea uh, we are very happy that rom gas has managed to see through the transaction with Exxon Mobil. We have a strong consortia, consortium uh, and a partnership between main extraction companies in Romania. And this, I believe, is added value and will contribute to the success of the project. Starting with August 1st, we took over the role of operator. We have initiated procedures along with uh, Romgas, and we will continue with the project. We believe that uh, the Black Sea for 2026-2027 will give us energy independence for uh, Romania, uh, both the, the necessary for consumption of gas and uh, electricity. Gas is a very versatile fuel. Uh, can, it can very well uh, complement renewable energy so as to avoid unbalances in the national transport system. A couple of words now on the OMV Petrom strategy. This year we've adopted our strategy that is very ambitious that wants uh, to bring the company to the 2050 horizon. We've undertaken decarbonation targets uh, near zero for 2050. The role of the company is the same, to meet the demand in various types that it can be. The energy demand. The, end, the strategy is quite ambitious. We aim to invest over 11 billion euro by 2030. What does this transformation entail? We want to already capitalize on the options generated by natural gas. Currently, in our portfolio, natural gas is about 50% of said portfolio. And by the end of this decade, we want to bring it to 70%. We will increase the way of renewables in our portfolio. Uh, zero emission investment. We want to reach a capacity of over one gigawatt solar energy by 2030. In all our plants, we want to set up a supply uh, stations for alternative mobility. mobility. Um, LNG, hydrogen, charging. Over 50% of the biofuel by 2030 of our total production will be generated by the uh, Petrobras refinery. We also look toward other technologies such as storing carbon. Romania is quite privileged in this respect. It has a long-standing tradition in the oil and gas industry. The 
best ores and deposits actually for carbon would be in the deposits of gas. This is a transformation that can breathe new life to industry for the following decades. We also have, uh, we also uh, take uh, uh, interest in geothermal power and we will be and are actually already active in all the funding opportunities that were launched through the Recovery and Resilience Plan. We uh, are looking forward to the first calls that will be launched through the uh, modernization mechanism. We are ready to invest. We are ready with our projects. Thank you. And I uh, will be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Maximescu. And well, definitely, as we know for some time now, OMV Petrom is a true partner oh, with respect to Romania's activity in this field. And we continue to rely on the investment area, on the new part of discovery for innovation, research, and the right of the future, actually, uh, with, this res with respect to this field. Last but not least, but it's as important to see the Rom gas position in this panel. That is why I give the floor to Mr. Popescu to share his opinion and, of course, the opinion of the company that he represents. Please, Mr. Dozvan Popescu. Hello, and thank you for the invitation. It's quite the honor for me to be here in the panel to represent Romgas in this conference. It is the second one that I'm part, uh, part in, and uh, the first time as a speaker. Uh, with respect to, well, the security of the area and of the Black Sea has been shown by Romgas through our purchase. Uh, it was a very complicated purchase, difficult one for a state-owned company that hasn't done such, hasn't had such endeavors before. But we managed to see it through successfully, and I think that all in all, Romgas shows its role of energy. Uh, a supplier in Romania. We've uh, delivered in the past two years 61% of the gas used in Romania. We want that we reach high operational performance. We want that the level of uh, uh, gas extracted to be continue to be high, although the deposits of the country are quite depleted and mature. So we believe that the Black Sea for Romania's energy security is the most important pillar and the purpose and the mission that we have. In addition, in parallel with this major investment, we want to have strategic options according to the fifth 455 to reduce methane, carbon, and other associated gas. We continue to focus on mitigating the uh, effects uh, of climate change, but we will focus on the basic activity that is hydrocarbons. So, in 2021, we've managed to increase production compared to 2020 by over 12.5%, and in 2022, we estimate to continue production at the level of the previous year. So, we've secured all contracts that we've, we have signed, and uh, we continue to deliver gas for all consumers in Romania. The decarbonation policy is also very important. We try to uh, produce uh, energy 
energy from renewables. We have such projects. We also implement uh, emissions management systems through changing compressors in various stations and uh, uh, to have an assessment of all emissions that the company currently has. And we expect that this year or uh, next year the latest to start a rating policy, a green rating policy, so as to uh, secure decarbonation and to show its importance. I would also add uh, the uh, factor to maximize recovery of uh, reserves until starting the production in Black Sea. This has to be supported through, uh, through own production. So we continue to have exploration and development activities uh, to uh, tap other deposits to uh, take concession of other perimeters. Though the basic, the main activity of the company continues and that will be complemented by the activity in the Black Sea. As mentioned, uh, with respect to the carbon emissions, we have a very ambitious uh, plan, 10, 10, 10, 10, to have a 10 degree, 10 percent decrease in methane, uh, CO2, and other associated gas emissions. We continue to focus on digitalization. We have digitalized quite a lot of processes in the economic area, investment area, drilling, and we're trying to monitor all wells to see at any time what their point is and how we can improve the processes. Please continue with the next slides. Main lines of action. These are to increase uh, the recovery factor, um, the importance of certain perimeters, uh, the one in Karachi, uh, the ones in Transylvania and Montana. All of these are and exploited, and exploited, and especially the long-term expansion to, uh, with respect to the mature gas deposits, which requests, requires investment. In order to continue exploitation with a gas deposit, you need great investment, especially with respect to the Karajale area, Transylvania, Montania, even Oltenia areas. We have massive investments to expand their um, lifespan extraction. We have certain graphics on our estimates um, that, and keeping this level of extraction is not an easy thing, given that their natural decline uh, of these deposits can be rather uh, expedited. This is the situation, as I said, in Transylvania, Moldova, Montania, and the other perimeter that was commissioned this year. Please go to the Neptune Deep. These are the two offshore projects where that ROM gas is part of tr Trident, 12.2% uh, participation share, and Neptune Deep, where we've managed to purchase 100% of rights and obligations that ExxonMobil had in partnership with uh, the Petro. We expect that the action lines uh, currently lead to completing and start, uh, actually finalizing and starting the exploitation for Neptune Deep. We also prepare funding uh, funding for this project, and we believe that the investment in unlocking gas from the Black Sea uh, is very important, both for the company and for Romania. And we, of course, look forward to a sustainable partnership, uh, or actually a long-term uh, partnership with the Romanian state and with our concession partner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Pescu. Very interesting uh, 
aspects presented, I am sure, both for specialists in the field and for those who are watching our conference online. I'm sure that following uh, the discussions in our panel, we are rich in ideas and we have a more clear image on the future in energy in Romania. We have some more minutes, so I kindly ask you in the audience if you want to ask questions questions. Mr. Ionica, please, and then we have another question. Thank you very much, Mr. Pirta. I have a que first question uh, for uh, industry representatives. Have you assessed uh, the effects of the emergency ordinance adopted by the government in the field of energy? And if that is helpful for you in view of uh, the significant investments uh, you should uh, make in the future investment uh, cycle, Mr. Stab mentioned in his presentation the issue of payments, the payment flows the companies are expecting from the Romanian state to compensate uh, for the compensation already granted during uh, the last cold season. If this is uh, a setback and what uh, the Minister of Energy can do for this, and the second question is related also to the decision to invest Invest in uh, the Neptune perimeter. Does OMV have any perspective uh, regarding this investment? Taking into account the time lapsed so far and the five-year blockage uh, to this investment now uh, with Romgas, a partnership for o OMV. Also, Yernut, if you can mention more specifically what happens there concretely, and then maybe Karajale, thank you. I will start with the last question. Right now we are negotiating with the former shareholder structure to start negotiations. We sent them a draft contract. We, it should return to us on the 12th of September, and then we will make a decision. We are confident that after long negotiations, many, many amendments and uh, difficulties during negotiations. Hopefully, after the 12th of December, we will restart works uh, in this central. It was a contract uh, amendment, as many, the minister mentioned earlier, there was a, a planning project. Um, the works could not be accepted until everything was functional according to certain parameters and now we changed the contract based on uh, works estimate uh, what uh, and uh, the works acceptance will be gradual as the works are finished so hopefully in September we will see positive developments with Yernut. We are determined to continue Neptune deep as far as, as fast as possible. The funding was uh, made very quickly, starting with October 1st, uh, OMV uh, Petron became uh, an operator on ground, and we will have to make this investment decision as soon as possible. We are analyzing the effects of the ordinance. In our viewpoint, we believe that uh, this is a moment where companies in the industry should be pragmatical and we must uh, demonstrate we stand united in front of this situation and uh, of uh, the European paradigm. So I believe that pragmatism and this uh, European unity are most important. Uh, uh, to quote the differences between countries and different uh, energy mixes, I believe we are among uh, the favored countries right now. 
Regarding your question on the emergency ordinance adopted yesterday, to be honest, it is too early to state uh, the consequences. I'm afraid that this ordinance will have unexpected and unwanted effects. We are under extraordinarily unprecedented, complicated circumstances, and it's not easy to adopt uh, well uh, thought actions uh, and hope for the expected uh, results. What is certain is that our industry is under a huge cash pressure. We need money. If we have money, to, if we want to invest, if we want to ensure the country's uh, supply security, it's very important that uh, uh, money, the compensation should be paid in due time. And uh, yes, I am worried about this, and I know that my colleagues in the industry are also concerned. Just a few words uh, from me. Regarding the ordinance, as I mentioned earlier, dialogue, consultation with the industry and the stakeholders is important before making a very important decision like this ordinance. Concerning its effects, it's difficult to quantify now. We are still analyzing the ordinance and the annexes were published yesterday evening. We are still analyzing regarding the vaccine investments. Here I join uh, the Romgas representative. Starting with August 1st, we became operators in this project, and together with our partner Romgas, we will quickly go through the corporate governance stages to move ahead with the project. No, not right now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that uh, discussions can continue during the coffee break. We have one more brief question. Thank you, Bogdan Bernaga, New Strategy Center and Greenwald. The three very quick questions. Minister, the contracts for differences for renewables, when do you estimate it will the CFDO contract, we are under a contract with the European Reconstruction and Development Bank. This month, we should have the material delivered by EBRD. The contract term is December 31st. But the discussions we've had with the EBRD management and uh, promise, their promises make us confident that we will have it. The new scale reactors, uh, how much, uh, to what extent they are more flexible than the classical reactors? Well, um, I, I am Kirika, not Kirika. Well, it's, no, you're not the first or the last to make this mistake. The new scale reactors have a high level of flexibility. Each module may be loaded and uh, unloaded uh, easily compared to a high power unit. 700, 1,000 megawatts. And second, uh, flexibility element. Uh, certain modules may be stopped and started again. So in our opinion, this is an ideal partner for cohabitation with renewables. Thank you. And the last question. This is a conference on security. I think uh, Romgas and OMV representatives, uh, how worried are you? of the potential hybrid threats by Russia at the Black Sea, because any gas molecule you are using is one gas molecule less produced by Gazprom. Together with our partners from Gaz and with the, the competent Romanian authorities, we are analyzing these risks. Romania is a NATO member and an EU member state. Surely the risks 
increased at the Black Sea. We can see that in the transport rates, which increased, uh, and the insurance costs, which are higher for any vessel at the Black Sea. It does not stop us to continue. It does not prevent us from continuing the project, and we strongly believe we can finalize it without major risks. We believe that our cooperation with the Romanian state will ensure the success of the project. Thank you very much. The panel uh, is now at the end. There is this uh, novel, uh, volume one starts with Time was patient, and the second volume starts with time was no longer patient. So I want to thank our colleagues. I want to thank the guests for the debate. Further, we continue with a short coffee break, and then we continue with other panels. I just now saw news announced by the European Commission thinking to cap the energy prices by a European Commission decision and to reduce energy procurement. We will see the decisions at European level and how we are going to adapt internally. Thank you.